हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू अनदर वीडियो ऑफ जीटा एक्सिस एंड टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट पैसिफिक ओशन करंट्स सो वी नो दैट ट्रेड विंड्स फ्लो इन दिस डायरेक्शन दे कम नियर द इक्वेटर एंड देन दे फ्लो पैरेलल टू द इक्वेटर इट इज बिकॉज़ ऑफ द ड्रैगिंग फोर्स अप्लाइड बाय दिस ट्रेड विंड्स वी सी इक्वेटोरियल करंट्स इन बोथ हेमिस्फीयर्स नॉर्थ इक्वेटोरियल करंट एंड साउथ इक्वेटोरियल करंट वी कैन सी दैट नॉर्थ इक्वेटोरियल करंट इज लिटिल अवे फ्रॉम द इक्वेटर and the south equatorial current flows very close to the equator we will see the reason for this in the later part of this video so now let's try to understand what are the two major factors which cause this equatorial currents one is rotation of the earth and inertia of water and second is trade winds at itcc so we know that wind flows in this direction and when it comes close to the intertropical convergence zones we see that it flows parallel to this region the dragging force of this trade winds causes the equatorial current or causes the water to flow in this direction moreover we know that our earth rotates from west to east and because of this a dragging force is applied on the water but because of the inertia the water particles try to stay in their position if you want to visualize this let's consider a vessel in which we have water now when we try to pull this water in this direction we will see that the water will be accumulated in the opposite direction because the inertia does not allow the water particles to change its location very quickly so let's now consider this with our earth here we have continental margins and there is ocean in between now the earth is rotating in this direction and therefore the inertia it carries the water in this direction there is a lag in the movement of water particles so they accumulate on the eastern margin of continents and we can see that the forces which cause this are wind force and rotation of the earth now because of this uh, difference in level gravity tries to pull the water from the higher level to the lower level and that is why we have a pressure gradient but this pressure gradient is less than the combined force of wind force as well as rotation of earth and that is why we see that water is accumulated in the western side of the ocean or eastern margin of the continents and this is called western intensification it is called western intensification because this is the western side of these oceans so here we can see the equatorial currents and we can see that the north equatorial current when it reaches close to philippines it gets divided into two parts the first part moves northward second part moves southward which is called mindanao current similarly the south equatorial current also divides into two parts the first part moves northward while the second part moves in the southern direction it is called east australian current here is the summary of pacific north equatorial current we have seen that it moves between 10 degree to 20 degree we have seen that it moves little north of the equator and is driven by northeast trade winds we already seen that trade winds cause the dragging force on the ocean waters and therefore we see those equatorial currents as you have seen upon reaching the philippines or taiwan the north equatorial current divides into mindanao current which flows in the southern direction and it then flows to form the equatorial counter current the part that flows north is called corosio current and there is interannual instability in north equatorial current because of el nino then is tendons in the la nina years we see that the equatorial current will be very strong when there is la nina going on but when there is el nino phase going on it will be very weak and this north equatorial current also moves north and south between summer and winters but it always remains north of the equator now here is the summary of pacific south equatorial current and it flows very close to the equator compared to the north equatorial current and it is driven by south east trade winds the current also bifurcates into two parts the north part it joins the counter equatorial current in pacific ocean while the southern part it forms east australian current now let's try to understand why the counter equatorial current is formed it is mainly formed by three factors western intensification that is accumulation of water on the western side of oceans because of difference in level gravity tries to pull the water from higher region to the lower region 
that is why there is a pressure gradient and lack of winds in the doldrums now we have seen that trade winds flow in this direction and they flow parallel to the itcz but the wind in itcz itself is very less the trade winds they do not enter the itcz zone here the wind is vertical in nature and therefore the horizontal winds are very low or very slow now we had seen earlier that in the equatorial regions there was pressure gradient and we had the wind force plus rotation of earth so these two forces combined overcame the pressure gradient and we saw western intensification but in the doldrums in the itcc there is no force due to wind and now the pressure gradient is greater than the rotation of earth and therefore the water in between these two equatorial current flows in the opposite direction in the backward direction it comes to this end and that is why this is called equatorial counter current so here we can see that the northern part of south equatorial current and the southern branch of north equatorial current they combine and they form this equatorial counter current which flows towards the eastern margin of the oceans and then it joins the north equatorial current as well as south equatorial current now here one thing we can note that this equatorial counter current is little north of the equator and not at the equator and the reason for this is that the itcz overall remains in the northern zone we can see this is the summer northern boundary and this is the southern boundary in the winter season therefore it always remains in the uh, northern hemisphere and therefore we see that the equatorial counter currents also always remains north of the equator here is the summary of pacific equatorial counter current the equatorial counter current caused by western intensification due to both north and south equatorial currents and the lack of wind in this region it is located above equator in atlantic and pacific ocean because the itcz remains in the northern hemisphere throughout the year and these counter equatorial currents are thinner or narrower compared to the equatorial currents now we know that winds in this region flow in this direction these are called westerlies and these are permanent winds they flow from southwestern direction towards northeastern direction and they also apply a dragging force on the ocean water below them moreover there is coriolis force also acting in this place in the northern hemisphere it will try to deflect the water in the right hand side and because of both of these regions we see that the northern branch of north equatorial current it is deflected in this direction and that is what we call kuroshio current this kuroshio current near japan meets a cold oyashio current and because of this mixing of cold ocean current and warm ocean current a filling occurs and a very favorable condition for fishery is produced we also see that a branch of this kuroshio current it moves along over here and it also enters the japan sea thus warming the japanese sea this map shows the extent of coral reefs in the form of these brown dots and we can see that we have coral reefs in japan mainly because of kuroshio current the warm kuroshio current provides suitable climate for these coral reefs and that is why we can see here we can see that this forms the northernmost boundary of coral reefs we do not find coral reefs north of it and this is because of the warm kuroshio current here is the summary of kuroshio current it is the northern part of north equatorial current which turns northwards because of the uh, coriolis force and the westerlies it is similar to gulf stream in north atlantic the kuroshio current is a powerful western boundary current and it transports warm equatorial water to the polar region so kuroshio current is basically formed from north equatorial current and because it comes from the equatorial region it carries warm water towards the polar region it forms the western limb of north pacific subtropical gyre and a part of it which is called tsushima current enters the japanese sea and provides warmth in that region now let's see how the kuroshio current affects climate of the adjoining regions we know that because of the warm water brought by the kuroshio current the coral reefs can exist in japan and they form the northmost boundary of coral reefs in the world 
the warm ocean surface waters they make the weather mild we know that japan is in higher latitudes but because of this warm waters of kurosio current the temperature is little raised up it is not as cold as it would be without this kurosio current because of the warm waters in the kurosio current there is moisture in the air above it when the air flows from the ocean towards the land it brings rain in the adjoining region the kurosio currents also brings tropical cyclones they provide the moisture and therefore sustain this uh, tropical cyclones now this kurosio current also meets the oyasio current which is a cold current which we have seen and because of this mixing of cold and warm current we see that dense fogs are formed and upwelling also occurs over here which is good for fisheries so here we have seen that a part of kurosio current it enters the japanese sea and it is called tosima current tosima current flows along the western coast of japan and this warm current with relatively high temperature and salinity modifies the weather condition here so even it keeps the japanese coast warmer now this kurosio current under the effect of westerlies is dragged in the northeastern direction now this extension of kurosio current is called north pacific drift and this north pacific drift again gets divided into two parts the one part is called aleutian current and the southern part is called california current here is the summary of north pacific drift it is an extension of kurosio current and the westerlies and it gets bifurcated into two branches the northern is called aleutian current the southern is called californian cold current the aleutian current is further divided into two branches and the one of it flows into bering strait the one current which flows into bering strait is called bering current and another moves towards the gulf of alaska so it is called alaska current this this north pacific drift it also forms a gyre in the north pacific region in the polar region and that is why it is called north pacific subpolar gyre it also forms part of the north pacific subtropical gyre so it is basically part of both of these gyres now here is a summary of aleutian current we have already seen that it is an extension of kurosio current which forms the north pacific drift and it gets divided into aleutian current and californian current this aleutian current further divides into bering current and alaska current the details of it we saw in the last slide so here we can see that the aleutian current the north part of this flows into the bering strait that is why it is called bering current while we see another part it moves towards the gulf of alaska it comes back and therefore we see that a gyre is formed and this is called alaska current so here is the summary of alaska current it's a southwestern shallow warm current so remember it's a warm current which flows along the west coast of alaska and it results because of northward diversion of north pacific current and we have seen that it forms a gyre so this is called alaskan gyre and it is a part of alaskan stream that turns southward and becomes part of the recirculation of the north pacific ocean current so basically this alaska current it moves towards the west coast and then it returns back we have already seen in the previous slide here you can see that it moves towards here and then it returns back so this is what we call as alaskan gyre now we have another current which comes from the arctic ocean through the bering strait and moves along the kamchatka islands so here are the kamchatka islands that is why this is called kamchatka current it's a cold water current flowing southwards from the bering strait it transports cold water of the arctic sea into pacific ocean and moves along the siberian pacific coast and the kamchatka peninsula further when this kamchatka current flows southwards in the south western direction it comes close to this japan where it is called oyasio current this oyasio current is also a cold current and it meets the kurosio current near japanese coast where it creates very good grounds for fishery a branch of this oyasio current it again enters in the japanese sea which is called lehman current so here is the summary of oyasio current it's a current which flows through the bering strait where it is called kamchatka current there is kamchatka peninsula and that is why it is called kamchatka current it transports cold water of the arctic sea into pacific ocean 
and it gets bifurcated into two branches. One branch turns eastward and merges with the Eleusian or the Kurosio current. And second, which is the Lyman current, it moves towards the Japanese coast. So this is very similar to the Labrador current of the North Atlantic Ocean. Now we will see the southern branch of the North Pacific Drift, which is called California current. And we can see that it moves in the southeastern direction, parallel to the western coast of North America, under the influence of Coriolis force, as well as because the water moves over here, there is a depletion of water in this region. This North Equatorial current takes a large amount of water from this part of the ocean towards the western side of the ocean. And therefore, a depletion of water is created. And under the influence of the Coriolis force, as well as the force created by depletion of water, this current moves in the southeastern direction. Now, this California current also flows through the upwelling region along the coastal boundaries of California. Here, the wind pattern is modified by the Rocky Mountains and the wind flows parallel to the coast of California, thus causing the Ekman transport where the water moves away from the coast. And to replace this water which is depleted on the surface, bottom water rises up, thus creating upwelling. So this is also one of the five major regions of upwelling in the world. Here is a summary of California current. It's a cold water current similar to Canary cold current of Atlantic Ocean. After reaching the Mexican coast, it joins with equatorial current. The reason being that a depletion of water occurs near the Mexican coast because of large scale transport of water due to trade winds in the form of North equatorial current. And this California current brings water from the north to compensate for the water which has been moved away from the Mexican coast. It is also a major upwelling zone which we just saw. And it brings cooler northern waters to the coast of western North America. So we saw that California current is a cold water current. Therefore, it brings cooler waters to the coast of the California. And therefore, it cools the atmosphere of the western coast of America. And there is an arid climate in the adjoining regions. We see Mojave Desert's formation near this coastal region. The reason being that when winds from the oceans move over these cold water currents, the water in them condenses in the form of fog. And now when these winds they move towards the land, there is no moisture in those winds. And therefore, they do not provide any rain to the coastal regions. And therefore, we see arid climate. Now, let's move to the southern Pacific region. Here we will see the east Australian current, which is the southern extension of South Equatorial current. We have seen that this South Equatorial current divides into two branches. The northern branch moves and joins the equatorial counter current, while the southern branch moves at East Australian current. This East Australian current brings warm equatorial water towards the polar region. And therefore, the Great Barrier Reef over here can survive because of the warm waters. It provides suitable climate for the Great Barrier Reefs over here. Here is a summary. It is formed from the South Equatorial Current and the northern branch of the South Equatorial Current joins the Counter Equatorial Current. The southern branch forms East Australian Current. East Australian Current carries a large amount of warm tropical water from the equator southward and keeps the East Coast warm. Because it has warm water, it keeps the eastern coast of Australia warm and it provides favorable condition for the Great Barrier Reef to thrive. This current also surrounds the New Zealand and it is deflected in the eastward direction due to westerlies and Coriolis force. So we know that there is westerlies flowing with very high velocity in this region which drag the water of this East Australian current along with them. Similarly, the Coriolis force also helps in this because in Southern Ocean, the Coriolis force will cause the ocean current to flow in the leftward side or it will try to deflect it in the left hand side. So here we can see that the western leaves flow in this direction. And here because there is no landmass and no obstruction, the western leaves flow with very high velocities in these regions. Now, they drag this East Australian current water in the eastern direction along with them. The Coriolis force also helps in this because in the southern hemisphere, the Coriolis force deflects the fluid in the left hand side. 
So under the influence of this Vestalis, we see that the water of this East Australian current moves in the eastern direction and forms South Pacific current. The South Pacific current is basically a cold ocean current because of the ambient cool temperature. So here is a summary of South Pacific current. We can see that it is a strong ocean current and it is an ESC deflected eastward due to Vestalis and Coriolis force. The current becomes much stronger because of immense volume of water mass and high velocity. So this is basically a very strong current because the Vestalis are flowing at a very high velocity in this region. When it reaches the South American region, it is bifurcated into two parts. One branch enters the Atlantic Ocean through the Cape Horn. So we see that when it reaches the southernmost part of this South American continent, it will get divided into two parts. One part will flow along the boundary of Chile, while the second will enter the Atlantic Ocean. The one which flows along the coast of Chile is called Peru Current. Now here we can also see that there is an Antarctic Circumpolar Current. So this Antarctic Circumpolar Current basically moves in a clockwise direction if we see from the South Pole. Otherwise, it flows from west to east. Now, because in this whole circulation, there is no land mass, therefore it flows with very high velocity. And it is able to keep the warm waters of the equatorial or tropical regions away. So we see that this cold water does not mix with the warm waters of the tropical region and therefore it helps in maintaining the ice sheets over here. Moreover, this forms the boundary of cold ocean water and warm ocean water and therefore there is a mixing of warm and cold water therefore this also forms a major upwelling region. Here also we see that uh, upwelling occurs and phytoplanktons are found in a large number along this uh, circumpolar current. So here is the summary of Antarctic circumpolar current which is also called as west wind drift. An ocean current that flows clockwise, seen from the south pole, we have just seen, otherwise it flows from west to east. It is driven by strong westerly winds. We have already seen that in these regions, the westerly winds flow with very high velocity because there is no landmass, there is no friction to stop those uh, winds and therefore their velocity is high. The alternative name for ACC is West Wind Drift. Now, this ACC is the largest ocean current it carries maximum water so it is not only the largest ocean current but it also carries the maximum amount of water and because there is no land mass around this antarctica we see that it keeps the warm ocean currents away from antarctica which helps in maintaining the ice sheets over here now associated with the circumpolar current is antarctic convergence zone we see that the warm waters of the tropical regions meet with the cold water of the polar regions and therefore we see a filling occurring over here which gives life to phytoplankton in this region. This current also creates Ross and Weddell gyres which are polar gyres in this region. Now let's see this South Atlantic current which extends along this Chile coast in the northern direction under the influence of the Coriolis force as well as to fulfill the depletion of water created over here because of the water which is carried by the south equatorial current. We can see that this is a cold ocean current and it flows parallel to the Chile boundary. This is also a major upwelling region as we can see over here and because the trade winds flow parallel to the coast over here, they transport the water away from the coastal region and therefore we see upwelling over here. This is the summary of Peru, which is also called as Humboldt current. It's a cold water current, flows along the western coast of South America from south to north, and it is a slow and shallow. An eastern boundary current similar to California current. It is a cold current, brings fog to the nearby coast. So basically it is a cold current, and whenever the moisture carrying currents are flowing from the ocean towards the land, when they come over this cold current, the temperature decreases, which causes the moisture to form fogs over oceans. Now, this fog removes the moisture from the winds. So, these winds, when they reach the landmass, there is no moisture in them, and therefore, they give very little rainfall in this region. So, these cold currents 
they form arid climate in the adjoining coastal regions. It is also a major upwelling region in the world, which, which we just saw, and guano is found in large amount in these coasts. It is basically created by the deposits of flocks of birds that feed on the coastal region. I hope I was able to explain these specific currents and if you like the video then do subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. If you have any doubts you can ask in the comments and we will try to solve them and if you like what we are doing then you can use the QR code over here to contribute to the work we are doing. Thank you and thanks for watching the video.